Okay, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. So last time uh, we were talking about intervals. Am I focused here? Let's see. It's a little better. Uh, we were talking about intervals and uh, natural domain and this kind of thing, and we're still talking about those things. <coughs> uh, specifically, uh, here's an example. <coughs> So, for example, please find the natural domain of square root of 3 multiplied w subtract 8 and then divided by w minus 10. <coughs> okay. Well, so this is a little bit of discussion that's not uh, not part of the solution, just discussion so can we can remember uh, relevant details. Could someone please remind us what natural domain is? Not, not what it is, not calculate the answer. I'm just saying what, what is it conceptually? Right. It's the largest set of inputs. Inputs are named W for this one. Uh, so is the largest set of inputs. And then we need to go on and be more specific. Largest, largest set of inputs, yes? For which this expression is defined. Okay, uh, well, in our class, uh, there are, at the present time, two ways uh, an expression could fail to be defined. So, so far, uh, one way that you all knew before you got here is that uh, division by zero is just not defined. You can't do that. So one of them is division by zero. And many of you, though in my experience not all of you, uh, before you got here knew another one. What's the other one, that the other kind of situation that causes things to be undefined? Uh, right. Uh, so divisions by zero and negative inputs to even radicals. Uh, which includes square roots, because square root has radical number equal 2. OK. So that's just, I'm just reminding you of the facts. Uh, so for this uh, specific exercise, um, well, uh, both of those are going to come into play. So as for the denominator, concerning the denominator, uh, what restriction does it place on the natural domain? W can't be 10. W can't be 10. So now I want to express this in the three notations that we know. In the algebraic notation, in the uh, interval notation, and also as a plot. So I'll, I'll draw it as a plot first, since that um, is a picture, and a lot of folks 
do pretty good with a picture. So what we're saying, whoa, what we mean by that, what we mean by w not 10, we mean any number at all on the number line except 10. We can't have that. So it, it, it will be like um, we took this whole number line and then we delete 10. And the way that we signify that 10 has been deleted is by putting that open circle there. <clears throat> okay, fine. How do we uh, how do we express this in interval notation? Very good. And now that we have the two no, these these two uh, representations up here, I want you to observe how similar they are, right? So the picture is saying, well, you can select anything to uh, on the left piece, or you can select anything on the right piece, but you just can't select 10. That's also what this is saying. This is saying, well, we're talking about the, the interval of numbers that are less than 10, or the interval of numbers that are greater than 10. Finally, how can we write this in algebraic notation? Well, I'm going to I'm going to do it I I don't dispute that you can do it without that you can do it with infinities, but I'm going to try and do it without to because I want y'all to get comfortable with that. So this one, we could write this as x less than 10. And then if if so what I mean specifically is is that one. So you could put a negative infinity less than x here also if it made you feel comfortable so that x would be between two things. Okay, then, or, or what? X greater than 10. Okay. So, in the three different notations, I, I want to emphasize that they're all saying exactly the same thing. This one is saying you could be to the left of 10 or to the right of 10. And this one is saying you could be to the left of 10 or the right of 10. And this one is saying you could be to the left of 10 or to the right of 10. So they're all saying exactly the same thing. <coughs> uh, that's, that's what the denominator requires. Uh, how about the numerator? Does it make any uh, restriction on the on the domain? It's an even radical. So what must be true? What cannot be negative? The argument, right? The input, the thingy going in. The thing being put in the thing. <laughs> okay, so it must be the case that 3 times w subtract 8 is greater or equal to 0. So we could solve for w. Uh, we could move the 8 to the other side. So it would be 3w greater or equal to 8. And then w greater or equal to 8 thirds. And nicely, this is already in algebraic notation. Right? It's already there. But. Uh, I want you to give it to me in all of the notations. So how can we write that in interval notation? Bracket. Eight thirds. Eight -thirds. Infinity, yeah. Okay. So now, my experience tells me that um, some of you were thinking this. Th 
that you wanted to write it this way. Why is this one not correct? Right. So, right. So, con concerning this, this is this is defining an interval, and eight thirds is has something to do with it. And is it the case that eight thirds is going to be the least permissible thing or the greatest permissible thing? The least, right? Because we want things to be greater or equal to eight thirds. So it's not this one. <clears throat> Then as a plot, so I'll draw a number line, and how how will the plot appear? Uh huh. Okay, good. <clears throat> Any question about uh, about the numerator? So now, uh, well, the, in the end, I'm not specifically interested in, in just the denominator or just the numerator. I'm interested in this. So the denominator is offering a requirement, and the numerator is offering a requirement. And what I want to know now is, is it the case that we need, concerning these two requirements, is it that we need this one to be true and this one to be true, or is it the case that we need this one to be true or this one to be true? And it's got to be and. It's got to be and uh, because it's the it's the whole thing has to be. You, you have to be able to do the whole thing. It is like you might have a uh, you know someone you want to go to dinner with, and then you say, uh, I would I would be agreeable to eating pizza or Italian or Chinese, and other person says, Well, I would be agreeable to eating. Italian or Mexican or M M Middle Eastern. I don't know what. I'm just making stuff up. Uh, well, that means that uh, that being the case, y'all are going to pick Italian, right? Because that's the only, that's the intersection, right? What's common? Both must be true. Uh, fine. So because we want both, And being the keyword, uh, well, we've got the red set and the green set, and we want to do a set operation. So, which one is it that we want to do? Which set operation? Union. Not union. No, intersection. intersection, right? Intersection, because that's the one that means and. So, just as a just as a reminder. Intersection means and. Union means or. So, <clears throat> like the bit of the road where two roads intersect, where they're crossing each other, we call that the intersection. And that's because that rectangle patch of road is part of the one road and also the other road. It's part of both. Yeah, you for, yeah, I said you for union. Uh, okay, so a as a result, we want to compute the intersection of these two conditions. So I'll draw two number lines. And then concerning the red set, 10 is important, and concerning the green set, 8 thirds is important. And now, it doesn't matter absolutely where they're placed, but they do need to be placed in the correct relative order. So between 10 and 8 thirds, which is the least? 8 thirds. -thirds. 
so I'll draw 10 a little bit to the right. So now we have them drawn and lined up. Uh, what's the rule for computing intersection from, from such a picture? Where, when, the, when you have both of them, right? So for example, over here, this might be like W is zero. Uh, well, zero is a red point. Is it a green point? It's not green. So is, is zero in the intersection? It is not. So you, we need to move further to the right. What will be the least point that's in the intersection? Eight thirds. So eight thirds is the, so is it uh, the eight thirds that I'm about to indicate, is it going to be an open circle or a closed uh, circle? Closed, right, because, it's, because it is included. Okay, then for example, this, this point right here, uh, that might be something like uh, five. Is five in the intersection? It is because it is red and green. Uh, so the intersection will go all the way up to what? And, and when is the first notable thing that will happen? 10, right? So is 10 in there? No, because it's not red. So we get everything between 8 thirds and 10. Do we get anything else? And, and also anything beyond 10. Any question about that uh, computation there? Do we have to do all three number lines? Well, uh, as long as it's clear. So uh, what? Where your answer came from. So. I mean, if the word above it is done, like. I'll 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 say this. I'll say it this way. Um, I have witnessed students submit work where they got say this part right and that part right, and then they attempted to do the rest in their imagination, and they did not order these correctly, and as a result, this is wrong. And uh, so the problem with that is, well, in the first place, it's wrong. Uh, so, so that's a problem. But also, in the second place, it's, it's uh, not clear how the wrong answer was arrived at. So not only is it wrong, it's also impossible to give partial credit. So what you're saying is, if it is right, it's irrelevant. As long as, it, as long as it's, in the opinion of the grader, clear where the answer came from. If it's, if it's ever not clear, then the, then the graders are instructed to take off. So uh, I can, I can, uh, I, I, I can, I'm a human being, right? I can surely understand uh, that we all share uh, a spirit of economy, which is a very polite way to say that we're all just lazy, okay? That's just part of uh, being human, I get it. But in this class, it's not the final answer that's being graded. It's the work that's being graded. If you don't, uh, if you don't supply the work, then there's nothing to grade, uh, which, which means that you get a zero. OK, so uh, how can we write this in interval notation? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. to infinity. But concerning my previous co comment, don't, don't, don't take me the wrong, wrong way. I love human beings. I think we're the most interesting things that exist. Uh, I, I think it's fantastic that we have this spirit of economy uh, so deeply in each of us. Um, so how can we write this in algebraic notation? Uh-huh. W. W. Is less than 10. 
less than 10. Right, or W greater than 10. Okay, so uh, these are the three answers uh, because I'll always ask for all three of them. Uh, but, and again, I want to point out that they're all saying the same thing. The plot is saying, well, you can select points from that piece or from that piece. And the interval is saying that, well, you can select points from that piece, from that interval, or that interval. And this one is saying from this inequality or that inequality. They're all saying the same thing. And is it, is it tedious that I keep asking you to show so much work and then on these ones to give three different equivalent representations? Yeah, it's tedious. Uh, but here's the thing is that, um, you know, in the end my goal is to teach. So I have to, so I like to choose effective teaching methods. Uh, in teaching a math class, of course, it's important to be correct. Okay, so then if, if the instructor is not correct, then you, you're not even, you're, you can't do anything. Um, in the second place, it's very good to have, to show students uh, multiple ways to think about the same thing. So that, that's what I'm doing here. And finally, if you're doing both of those things, the next most important thing is for you to repeat yourself a lot and then ask the students to repeat themselves a lot. And so this is a repetition. And then the next most important thing is to repeat yourself a lot and ask the students to repeat themselves a lot. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> Fine. So here's a... Here's a, uh, well, here's some news about um, your previous education. Uh, an aspect that uh, was at, l at, at the least emphasized, <coughs> had the wrong emphasis on it, and more likely was just flat out taught incorrectly. So most students, are, and I'll put this in scare quotes, commanded to cancel. Uh, in the following kind of way. Suppose that uh, you have an expression like this, x multiply 3, uh, sorry, x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 2, and then divided by x minus 3 multiplied by x plus um, 7, say. Well, concerning this expression, uh, concerning this expression, do you observe that the numerator has a factor of x minus 3 and the denominator has same factor x minus 3? So if I obscure those for a moment, and if I were to just tell you that, well, in the numerator I'm obscuring a 5, and in the denominator I'm obscuring a 5, then what could you do with those 5s? You could cancel them, right? You could cancel them. Uh, and it would be, if they were 5s, that'd be just fine. And there'd be nothing for me to talk about. But they're not 5s, they're x minus 3s. So we've got x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. Suppose we cancel. Uh, what would the resulting expression be? Very good. It would be uh, x minus 2 and divided by x plus 7. Uh, but there's a concern here. It's not that something is wrong yet. It's that uh, you're now in very big danger of overlooking something. Uh, but cancellations... can alter the natural domain. Because if we consider these two expressions uh, independently of each other,
So I'm going to ignore the first one for a moment and just ask, what is the natural domain of this one? Right. So anything but negative 7. Uh, so how do we write that in algebraic notation? So on the one hand, we could be to the left of negative 7, right? So x less than negative 7. And what else is conceivable? We could be to the right of 7. Uh, negative 7, I mean to say. So those are the possibilities. So there's two other notations. Which one do you want to do next? This one is the algebraic one. The interval one. OK, so how do we express this one in interval notation? Negative infinity. To Very good. Negative infinity to negative 7. How do you write or? Union. Uh, and how do you write that? Very good. Okay, and then how do we plot this? <clears throat> Very good. So it, it, it is like someone took the whole number line and then stole away negative 7. Okay, so any question about this? <clears throat> okay. Now, what's the natural domain of this one? So I think we're all in agreement that for, for this expression right here, uh, negative 7 is not OK for the same reason it was not OK in the other one. Um, but there may be a slight question mark. Is, is 3 OK for this one? It isn't. Uh, well, concerning the numerator, if you plug in 3, that's 0 and that's 1, and 0 times 1 is zero. Is it okay to have a zero in a numerator? That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but if you plug in three in the denominator, you'll have three uh, sorry, you'll have zero multiplied by ten, which is zero. So we'd have a zero in the denominator. Is that okay? This is not okay. So what's the natural domain? OK, good. So x naught 3, x naught negative 7. So now we want to express this in algebraic notation, interval notation, and plot notation. So I'll do the plot notation first. So it'll be quite similar to the other one, actually. Uh, but instead of deleting this one point, we're going to delete two points, right? <clears throat> so I'll mark out the two points I'm going to delete. And I'll wait for someone to say it. What do you mean? I deleted them both. OK, I agree entirely, right? So then, does everyone see it? Does everyone see the problem? I deleted two points. That's good. But then, this is not the order that they appear in on the number line. Okay, it, negative 7 is to the left of, of 3. Uh, now, that may sound like a trivial matter, but here's the thing. I, I witness students submit answers like this every, every time I teach this class. Uh, my hypothesis as for why that occurs is because I put this factor to the left of that one, and then that number was written to the left of that one, and, it in it, and then these numbers end up getting plotted in that same order. 
because when student makes an error, it's whatever numbers are up here, if it's an error, these ones are in the same order. So I'm just pointing it out uh, so that you'll be on guard for that. <clears throat> okay, so now, uh, well, the example on the right had two pieces and this one has three pieces. Okay, uh, so how can we write this in interval notation? To negative seven, union, very good, union, three to infinity. Okay, and then how can we write this in algebraic notation? So I, I recommend you do them in the, in, in the same order in the plot. So x less than negative 7. So that is to say, you could be to the left of negative 7. How do you write union? 4. Okay. Or you could be in the middle. So how do you say in the middle? Huh? Less than x, less than 3. And then, or x greater than 3. <clears throat> Any question about the two columns? Where do we go to access these lectures? Uh, well, there, if, if you log into eLearning, and click on announcements for the 701 section. There's a bunch of annou announcements. The links are all early, so you'll have to scroll down to the bottom be because, they're, because the latest ones are posted on the top. Uh, I, there, there's, a there's a link there that goes to my webpage. You can get the PDF, and also there's a link that goes to YouTube. You can get the videos. Did that answer it? It seems like I go there and I can't find that. Okay. So you said go to e-learning. Uh huh. And then click on the 701 section. Say that again. Click on the 701. Click on the 701. Uh huh. And then when you do that, on the left side, there'll be a thingy that says announcements, my grades, some other stuff. You click on announcements. In the announcement was made sometime in January, near the beginning. Because when I open, when I go to e-learning, mm -hmm. it has my three classes listed, mm -hmm. and then it has you like college algebra twice. So and then I click on both of those, but it uh -huh. takes me to that web assign page. So no, nah, well, yes, that that's the ho that's the home page. <laughs> when you click on seven hundred one, and then to the left of the web assign link you'll see a, another link that says announcements. So you just got to look a little, once you see WebAssign, just look a little bit to the left. <clears throat> okay. Oh. I, I do it on my iPad and I can't see any of what you're talking about. Ah. I see. Well, then that's the answer. That's the mystery. Is that evidently, I only use a computer uh, to do it. You can still get there you I see. Okay, so back to, we got to get back to this. So we considered these two things separately, and what I want you to observe is that these two answers are different, aren't they? They're different. So uh, this kind of thing shows, its, shows itself in the following situation. Uh, so I could say 
Um, find the natural domain of x squared plus 8 times x plus 16 over x squared plus 11 times x plus 28. I want you to give it uh, in, the, in the three notations. Notations and uh, simplify by cancellation. <clears throat> okay. How could we go about doing these things? By factoring. Okay, so we'll factor numerator and denominator. So concerning the numerator, can you think of two numbers whose product is 16 and whose sum is 8? 4 and 4, right? So the numerator factors to x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 4. And concerning the denominator, 7 and 4. Okay, so do you observe that there is a factor common to numerator and denominator? And we were specifically instructed to simplify by cancellation. So what's the answer? Right. An x plus 4 remains in the numerator, and an x plus 7 remains in the denominator. Okay, so this is the simplified uh, expression. Now, what have we yet to do? We need to find the natural domain. So, but the problem here is that now we have three expressions written on the page, right? The one that the question was stated with, the factorization we made of that expression, and also the simplified version. And the question is, is that where natural domain is concerned, which one are we supposed to use? The factored one. Okay, so then <clears throat> for the natural domain, we cannot use this one because a natural domain altering cancellation has occurred. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the error that you're in danger of making is using that one. That's the danger. OK, so then uh, we want the natural domain of this expression, the one that I stated the problem with. And we got to work by factoring it. Uh, but uh, my question is, is that, well, if the cancellation evidently alters the natural domain sometimes. Uh, does the factorization do it? No, it doesn't. Factoring doesn't alter the natural domain. Canceling does. So that means that we can use this one. Use this one. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So what is the natural domain according to this one? Right. We can't have negative 4, and we can't have negative 7. OK. 
Okay, so how do we write this in algebraic notation? Well, okay, negative infinity. N not positive 4. Negative 7 first, right? Wait. Wait. <laughs> well, you can. I, I'm only doing it because he, he said it. But So I'm going to write it like this. You can write it that way. It's fine. Of course, you could, you could omit that part because it's implied. But if you, if you like to see x between two things, you, you, know, you, can, you can put it there. Uh, or what? Uh-huh. Or right, and I'm gonna just so it looks the same as all the others. I'm gonna write negative four less than x less than infinity. Of course, you can delete the less than infinity because that's implied, <clears throat> and you can delete the greater than negative infinity because that's implied. Okay. For for interval notation, now we'll have exactly these pieces. So how do you write this one in interval notation? Uh huh. Mm hmm And then how do you write or? Union. This one? To negative four. And then or is union. And then this one? negative 4 to infinity. And then as a plot, well, <clears throat> it'll be just like someone took the whole number line and then stole away their two favorite points Any question about this kind of exercise? Is this, is this the best and fastest way to do everything to go with the sub sub factor simplify the main implementation? So there's, that's a bit of a loaded question. There's two things there. Uh, so I would say that your question sort of presumes that we're looking for the answer, but we're not. Uh, what, we're, what we're doing is we're looking for the process of how to do it. So in some cases later in the course, it may be the case that we just want the answer. And I promise you the highest and most serious promise, I will show you the most efficient way uh, to, to the answer. But what's being graded here is the work. And th this is the best way. Good. Uh, please put away your things. It's time for a quiz.